I am Dr. Jason Johnson, one of the Pediatric Cardiology Fellows at Duke University. This is the voice annotated presentation on atrioventricular block with emphasis on this disease in the pediatric population. This presentation will focus on the types of atrioventricular or AV block. I will go over each different type and show you examples with electrocardiograms. The different types are first degree, second degree, and third degree AV block. I will discuss briefly the key aspects to remember about congenital complete heart block. I will focus on the incidence, etiology, and prognosis of this disease. And I will end with indications for cardiac pacing with a pacemaker as it pertains to patients with atrioventricular block. In patients with first degree atrioventricular block, the PR interval is greater than established norms. The PR interval is defined from the beginning of the P wave to the beginning of the QRS complex. I will review how to calculate the PR interval on the next slide. The PR interval is more age dependent than rate dependent. This finding is typically benign and no intervention is required. It is a relatively common finding and is present in 6% of neonates. There are several disease states associated with first degree AV block. The infectious causes include, but are not limited to, rheumatic fever, diphtheria, trichinosis, Chagas disease, rubella, and mumps. Other causes are hypothermia and an increased parasympathetic tone. Electrolyte abnormalities commonly cause a prolonged PR interval and specifically are due to hypo or hyperkalemia, hypo or hypercalcemia, hypoglycemia, and hypomagnesemia. Different types of congenital heart disease can lead to first degree AV block. Duchenne's muscular dystrophy and myotonic dystrophy affects the conduction system and the first sign is typically prolongation of the PR interval. Several drugs can lengthen the PR interval, and the most common drugs are listed here, digoxin, beta blockers, and calcium channel blockers. This is a chart outlining the different PR intervals based upon the age of the patient. As you can see, the normal PR interval varies with age. Therefore, a PR interval of 0.16 seconds is normal in an 8-year-old, but first-degree AV block in an 8-day-old. Patients older than 15 years of age with a PR interval greater than 0.2 seconds or 200 milliseconds have first-degree AV block. Therefore, any patient with a PR interval greater than 200 milliseconds has first-degree atrioventricular block. This is a 12-lead electrocardiogram of a patient with first-degree atrioventricular block. First, direct your vision to the P waves that are labeled at the bottom of the slide. Then look at the QRS complexes labeled at the bottom of the slide. The red lines define the PR interval, which is measured from the beginning of the P wave to the beginning of the QRS complex. This patient's PR interval measures 330 milliseconds. No matter the patient's age, he or she meets criteria for first degree AV block. The next type of atrioventricular block I will discuss is second degree atrioventricular block. This was first described in 1899 by Dr. Winkiebach. There are two types of second degree AV block and it is very important to distinguish between the two types. The different types are known as Mobitz type 1 and 2. Type 1 second degree atrioventricular block is also called Mobitz type 1. It is defined by a progressive prolongation of the PR interval. Typically the largest increase occurs between the first and second beats although this isn't always the case. There is also progressive shortening of the RR interval. The RR interval is defined as the time from one R wave to the next R wave. Ultimately, the atrial impulse fails to conduct, a QRS complex is not generated, 
and there is no ventricular contraction. Said another way, the PR interval progressively prolongs until there is a P wave without a QRS complex. The PR interval prolongs until there is a P wave with a dropped beat. This is typically caused by increased vagal tone and is common during sleep. Type 1 second degree AV block is typically not pathologic and of no concern. This finding typically does not warrant any intervention. This is a 12 lead electrocardiogram of a patient with type 1 second degree atrioventricular block. Starting with a third beat and lead AVF, you can appreciate a normal PR interval. However, the fourth and fifth beat show a progressively prolonging PR interval with ultimate dropping or non-conduction of the sixth atrial beat. This is shown by the vertical red lines that depict the onset of the P waves and the vertical blue lines that depict the onset of the QRS. Notice how the distance between the red and the blue lines increases, which is PR prolongation. Also notice how the distance between the blue lines shortens, which is the progressive shortening of the RR interval. Ultimately, the ventricular beat is not conducted and therefore no QRS and no vertical blue line. We just identified all three criteria for diagnosing type 1 second degree atrioventricular block. Now I will go over type 2 second degree AV block, also called Mobitz type 2. This is defined by intermittent non-conducted atrial impulse. The PR and RR intervals between conducted beats are constant. This is the major difference between type 1 and type 2 second degree AV block. Both types involve a non-conducted atrial impulse, but type 2 has constant PR and RR intervals, while type 1 has prolongation of the PR interval and shortening of the RR interval. This finding on an electrocardiogram implies a pathologic abnormality in the conduction system. This form of second-degree atrioventricular block can progress to third-degree AV block. Therefore, it is extremely important to be able to differentiate the two types. This is a 12-lead electrocardiogram of a patient with type 2 second-degree atrioventricular block. Look at the bottom of the ECG at lead V1. There are two P waves for every QRS complex. The second P wave is accompanied by a QRS complex, indicating appropriate AV conduction. However, the next P wave is not associated with the QRS complex. I included some red vertical lines representing the P waves and some blue vertical lines representing the QRS complexes. As you can see, there are twice as many red lines than blue lines. You should also see the distance from the red to blue lines stays the same, representing a constant PR interval, and the distance from the blue to blue lines stays the same, representing a constant RR interval. Therefore, we just diagnosed this patient with type 2 second degree AV block with 2 to 1 conduction. I will now cover third degree atrioventricular block, which is simply defined as complete atrioventricular disassociation. The RR interval is typically constant, and the P to P interval can be variable. The diagnosis is based on the fact that P waves that should conduct do not conduct. Therefore, the ventricular beats are completely driven by the ventricular conduction system without any input from the atrium. Third degree AV block is associated with congenitally corrected transposition of the great vessels, also known as LTGA. In fact, patients with this lesion have a 2% per year incidence of complete heart block. Third degree AV block is also caused from complications from myocardial abscesses and complications of surgical repair of congenital heart disease. Most estimates state this occurs in 3% of surgical correction of congenital heart disease. As you would expect, some defects are more predisposed to this complication. The atrioventricular node is damaged during the operation and does not allow the atrial impulse to travel to the ventricles.
This next slide is a 12 lead electrocardiogram of third degree atrioventricular block. Please look down at the bottom of the ECG at lead V1. There is clear dissociation of the P waves and the QRS complex. The atrial rate is around 60 beats per minute, while the ventricular rate is around 33 beats per minute. The P wave is completely buried in the first and fifth QRS complex and is not seen. This confirms the atrioventricular disconcordance. I will now briefly discuss congenital third degree atrioventricular block. Instead of developing complete AV dissociation after birth, these neonates develop third degree AV block in utero. The incidence is 1 in 15,000 to 22,000 live births. The etiology is most commonly, roughly 60 to 90 percent of all cases, related to connective tissue disease in the mother, like lupus or Sjogren's syndrome. There is transplacental passage of maternal IgG antibodies, specifically anti-SSA, Rho, and anti-SSB, La antibodies. The antibodies attack the fetus's conduction system and lead to third-degree AV block. This is an important fact to know. There is a large percentage of mothers who had no idea that they had lupus until their fetus was diagnosed with third-degree AV block. Other causes include myocarditis, various structural heart defects, and the rare congenital absence of the AV node. The fetus presents with bradycardia and hydrops, a collection of fluid in the abdominal cavity, thoracic cavity, and beneath the skin. This hydrops is caused by the low cardiac output from the heart block. In neonates, they present with bradycardia, heart failure, and acidosis. There is a large list of recommendations for pacemaker indications. We will focus on the indications associated with atrioventricular block. The indications in a patient with type 2, second degree, or third degree AV block associated with symptomatic bradycardia or poor cardiac function. We would recommend pacemaker implantation in post-operative type 2, second degree, or third degree AV block that is not expected to resolve or that persists at least seven days after cardiac surgery. Those patients with congenital third degree AV block with a wide QRS escape rhythm, complex ventricular ectopy, or ventricular dysfunction should receive a pacemaker. Without those findings, patients with congenital third degree AV block in an infant with a ventricular rate less than 55 beats per minute, or with congenital heart disease and a ventricular rate less than 70 beats per minute, should receive a pacemaker. Sometimes children's ventricular escape rate is higher than these indicated values. Those patients are followed very closely to make sure their intrinsic ventricular rate doesn't change. These are the references to two book chapters and the guidelines for pacemaker insertion in patients with atrioventricular block. Thank you for your time.